contest chair, uh, Dmitry Trapeznikov. Uh, welcome, Dmitry. Dear Mr. President, dear fellow members and guests, good evening. Today we'll have not a usual meeting, as it was said. Today we'll have the evaluation contest. But uh, in fact, we will have all the parts of traditional Toastmaster meeting because we will have uh, here the performance on the stage by our target speaker. Then we will have evaluation parts and uh, actually it will be the evaluation con contest itself with lots of evaluation, one speech. And uh, after it, we'll have table topic session where everyone uh, will be able to participate and especially newcomers are very welcomed on this stage. So, having this in mind, I would like to uh, start explaining the rules of the contest because today I'm not the usual Toastmaster, I'm the contest chair. It's basically the same, but I'm responsible uh, for how the contest will go. So, before we had a draw, and uh, we know the sequence of uh, participants who will evaluate the speech of our target speaker. So, uh, talking about target speaker, you will know his name quite soon. So, he will have his speech here on the stage. Then, uh, we, and during this moment, all the participants can make notes for his future evaluation. And uh, after the uh, speech of target speaker will end, all the participants will be guided outside by our Surgeon at arms, and today it is uh, our newcomer Sergei. So, Sergei will help us. Yeah, so uh, our participants will be outside for five minutes. They will be continuing working on their evaluations, probably feeling, uh, making some notes as well. And after five minutes, Sergei will uh, go and collect all the evaluation notes from the participants. And uh, the first speaker with his evaluation notes will come here to the stage and will make the first evaluation. And then, after the first evaluation, we will have one minute of silence for the judges. Because here among us there are some judges, also secret people, and uh, they will be uh, making their evaluation uh, after each uh, presentation of uh, participants of the contest. So, uh, we'll have minutes of silence after each uh, participant and after the last participant we'll have the so-called moment of silence. Uh, it could be one, two minutes, maybe three minutes, uh, which will allow all the participants to fill their ballots and to verify the, uh, the winners. And uh, then the uh, chief judge will uh, collect uh, all the ballots and we will we'll go for count. And uh, probably that's it, talking about the rules. So uh, timing, as I already discussed, is 2 to 3 minutes, 1 minute 30 seconds or 3 minutes 30 seconds disqualification. So pay attention to timers guys and and timers today by the way it's uh, very important to introduce our timers uh, we have two timers first one is george echvaya right george yeah. and, also you. and also we have uh, alexander shirbakov who is also our cameraman today uh, right and uh, the last very important question to our chief judge who is tatiana gladashova please welcome tatiana and my question to you has all the judges been briefed uh, yes. so they know their roles they know the rules great okay uh, just one sec uh, the timing for the target speaker yeah you have it here great so and now it's time to introduce our target speaker uh, our target speaker today is Callum Hems so please welcome <laughs> come to the stage, I would like to say that he will have uh, a special speech today, because it's not uh, a usual speech, it's a commencement speech uh, uh, in front of graduates of university. So imagine, you are in some time in the future probably, the graduation year 2019, and Callum Hems will give his commencement speech to the uh, graduating students uh, of Nottingham, Universe, right? So please welcome Count Hams, our target speaker. And the title? 
Commencement speech. Commencement speech 2019. <laughs> well, first of all, I want to say I have no idea why the university picked me. Uh, I got a I got a low second in my degree, which was a lot worse than my friends who achieved first and seconds. So I was a low achiever at university, as a matter of fact. Also, I haven't paid any of my student loan back yet. Not a single penny. So I'm starting to think that's the reason you invited me here, was to get that money back. But anyway, what I really want to say is congratulations to you guys. You've graduated and that is fantastic. That is a huge achievement and you really should be proud of yourselves. So well done. Now a lot of you are going to be about to embark on a journey out into the world, leaving university behind. And probably you're going to be thinking about trying to make a success for yourself. So what exactly is success? just want to take a look at this for a minute. When I was younger, my family used to watch a lot of TV. My mum and dad used to watch TV all the time. They probably gave the box more attention than they gave me. So I grew up thinking that I know, what I, know what, I know what success is. Success is being on the TV. So I grew up thinking, I'm going to be on the TV. But as I got older, I realized it's not what success is. It's not at all what success is. And the TV is just a means to an end. So there's many people that are successful in life. You might want to say that Donald Trump is successful. You might want to say that Carlos Slim is successful. Note that Trump is on TV a lot, and most of you, I don't know, who knows who Carlos Slim is? Raise your hands. Okay, so one of the richest men in the world. But no, not a lot of people have heard of him. You might want to say that Lee Child is successful. He's a writer, doesn't earn that much money. But why would you say he's successful? I would say that's because all of these people, no matter how much money they make, no matter how big an audience they have, they're doing what they love. So I'd say that that's the first thing that makes you successful, is following your passion, doing what you love. If you do that, anything else will just be a byproduct, including reaching an audience from the TV. So success is following your passion. But there's more. Success is following your passion without fear. You absolutely must take risks. Now, when I was in university, I really wanted to be in a band. And I played electric guitar, I played it for six years. But the thing is, the people who I met who wanted to be in a band, they were interested in folk music. So they said, we'll only accept you into the band if you play the banjo. I didn't even know what a banjo was. <laughs> but I decided, okay, I'm gonna go to the nearest shop, buy a banjo, learn how to play it. And I sat in my room for a long time learning how to play the banjo, then auditions for the band, got the part, and we were playing music for three years. Unfortunately, after that, they decided to leave the band and go and get real jobs. But the fact remains is I jumped in and I found myself having some great experiences. From there, I went on to do stand-up comedy. I thought I was performing music on my own anyway. Why don't I try joking around? So I put the banjo down, picked up a microphone, and started to tell jokes. Never done stand-up comedy before in my life. Didn't know how to tell a joke. People said I didn't even have a sense of humor. But I watched a lot of stand-up comedy. I found what I thought was funny, and I tried stand-up. And eventually somebody invited me to the Edinburgh Festival, where I performed there, one of the biggest comedy festivals there is in the world. So I had a great experience. Now I'm writing a book, a memoir, based on the same thing. I had the idea to do it, and I just jumped in. Didn't know how to write a book. Didn't know what I was doing. But nevertheless, I finished it, and now I'm sending it out to publishers. So I believe that success is following your passion without fear, because provided you take risks, you're going to have some really, really great experiences in life. But there's more. This is my third point. I would say this. Success is following your passion without fear until you finish. Because if there's one thing or two things that I regret, it's giving up music and giving up stand-up comedy. And if I could go back, I would tell myself to keep going. Despite the fact that my bandmates quit, 
I would have said, find more, keep doing music, don't transfer. Because if you notice one thing that all the people that are successful, all the people that are aspirational do, is they keep going with the same thing until they finally finish. Now, when I was writing my book, I started off at the beginning and I was excited. I was determined to finish. And I wrote the first about 90 or 100 pages in an absolute rush. And then I hit the part where most writers call the sagging middle. It's a part where everything becomes boring. Things start to seem like deja vu. Like you've done it before, your friends are going out, it's sunny outside, you don't really want to do it, the excitement's worn off. But Seth Godin wrote a book called The Dip. He speaks about the thing when you, when you start something, eventually you come to a dip. This is the moment where the majority of people give up. But Seth Godin says you push through the dip and you keep going no matter how hard it is because soon you realize that you're about to finish. And let me tell you, that's when the excitement comes back. That's when you realize you've got about 20 pages left to finish your book and you write the whole thing within about two hours and then you're finished. There's a guy I love called T.D. Jakes and one of his quotes is this, show us how to finish. Because there are so many people that start things but give up. So be the person that shows us how to finish. You will have an enormous sense of pride from this. So what is success? Success is following your passion without fear until you finish. And I think that's just about my time. So I'm going to have to pop off because I'm sure that many of you want to throw your hats up in the air and go to the nearest pub for a drink and celebrate your achievements. But I want to leave you with a poem that has inspired me enormously. It's from my favorite writer, whose name is Rudyard Kipling. Some of you might recognize the name. And I'll just read you a short excerpt from this poem to finish. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you and make allowance for their doubting too, if you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to, all broken, and stoop and build them back up with worn out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and then risk it on one turn of pitch and loss and lose and start again at your beginnings but never breathe a word about your loss. If you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it and what's more, you'll be a man, my son. Thank you. all the students there. And now uh, it's time for our evaluators to leave the audience for five minutes. So guys, you'll have five minutes. After Mr. Gabe will collect all your notes. Okay. And now, just wait a sec. Yeah, I think we can start timing. Yeah, and now I would um, like to explain how we will greet our participants. Because it's very important not to distract them during their minutes, minutes on this stage. So the greeting procedure will go like that. I will uh, uh, say, please welcome participant number one. Nikolai Dinesenka, and then we will applaud yeah. and to show and then after Nikolai will come to the stage, no applauding, Nikolai will, will start his speech. So uh, to show an example, please welcome participant number zero, Callum Hems. Callum, please, to the stage. We are applauding, Callum or another evaluator uh, comes here and starts evaluating, no applauding afterwards. So Callum, you are here now and to feel this four or five minutes uh, for, our, for our evaluators. I would like to ask 
you a few questions because uh, I've personally found this speech very interesting for me. So, uh, something first of all, when was the last time you played banjo? About five, four or five years ago. Yeah, <laughs> and guitar? The guitar, same? probably last week. <laughs> ah, so with the guitar you, you uh, keep going, yeah, in a way? Yeah, a friend of mine bought me a guitar, ah, so I did right. actually so, but a friend of mine bought me a guitar, so I could not uh, resist. Ah, okay, so actually you didn't forget this dream of you or yours forever. You're, you're continuing in a way. No, I still play music. So yeah, something. great, great. Also, you talked about stand-up comedy. Yes. Yeah, I'm not asking when was the last time. I just want to ask, uh, what is the most intimidating thing about stand-up comedy for you, personally? Um, the other stand-up comics, not the audience. Uh -huh. I think that the audience, a lot of people say about hecklers, mm -hmm. it's not so common, mm -hmm. I realize. And anyway, if you do get a heckler, it, they're normally too drunk to know what they're actually saying. Hackler is the person who, who the drinks from the audience. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, but the other comedians, it's a very competitive environment. Mm -hmm. So they all hope that you do badly so mm -hmm. that they come across to the audience better. Mm -hmm. So actually the environment, the competitive environment, uh -huh. I did not uh, enjoy. Uh -huh. Okay, I hope that we will have a better environment between our contestants today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and talking about your book, is it finished now? Yeah, my memoir is finished. Memoir. <laughs> yeah. Do you have the name? Um, the title? Yeah, it's called Sex, Music and Anorexia. So. <laughs> okay, uh, can about. we find it for now? Uh, the book somewhere or it's still no uh, I'm trying to get it published cross. so I'm keeping it locked up uh -huh. until the publisher accepts it oh, okay and briefly for the audience in a few words uh, why we should buy your book uh, why it is so interesting uh, you should buy it if you're interested in mental health it's about a relationship that I had with a girl that was anorexic um, and it was the story of what happens when you're in a relationship with someone who has a severe mental health condition. So the book follows my journey through that relationship, experiencing like the mental breakdowns that this girl had and various other things that happened. I won't tell you the end because I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> okay, and when you hope you, uh, you will be able to edit, uh, to get it to uh, edit for and to publish it. At the moment I'm sending all my emails out uh -huh. with copies of the book attached uh -huh. to try and get an agent. Uh -huh. okay. um, I have not had a response as of yet. And um, probably I'm hoping. And we hope as well. Yeah, we really want to read it soon. <laughs> and probably the last question, what or were your inspiration to write the book? Or one inspiration? Uh, my sister was anorexic as well, so I grew up with this mental illness in the family. That's why I got into this relationship with the girl. Um, and then about three years ago, I just thought it was a really good story and I wanted to write a book anyway. So I thought that would be a really good place to start, just because it seemed interesting to me and it was something that I knew about. That uh, you can keep it and then do it. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, give to each one. Yeah, yeah. each person. Thank you, Carl. It was very interesting, and we really hope to meet your book soon. Yeah, yeah. good luck, good luck with uh, publishing it. And now, Sergey, could you ask the very first participant, Nikolai, uh, come here and uh, give his evaluation to Callum? So. Dear audience, please welcome participant number one, Nikolai Denisenko. Thank, Thank you very much, Dmitry. Dear Toastmasters, dear guests, dear 
Колумбу. First of all, I see you as a very experienced speaker. No question. You are, you know all the tools, gestures, voice, everything was very perfect from that point of view. The purpose of uh, the speech was to have inspiration speech in front of uh, people who just graduated from university, right? You have to, you're supposed to inspire him to go further. And the main message from you was to follow your passion, take the risk, and you will be successful. That's what I captured from your speech. That's what I like about your speech is uh, uh, you provided a personal story. That was really, that was touching actually and uh, very emotional. And that was very good because it, that was your personal story. And uh, uh, when, people, when, when people share personal stories, that's always you know, a, a good, good thing uh, to use. That's excellent. Though, uh, Kalum, I have a few more things uh, uh, to pay attention to. Because when you come to the stage, uh, the first thing you said, I don't know why people ask me to make a speech. That's, again, that's, uh, for inspiration speech you need to be star. But you don't know why you are star here. That's a bit con confusion, uh, uh, a little bit, uh, Kalum. Another one, uh, you provided many examples of your story. Musician, uh, uh, comedy club, and then book writing. Main message of your speech was, please be persistent, I mean, uh, uh, please do not give up. Follow your passion and you will be successful at the end. But I couldn't uh, find in your speech that's exactly uh, the, the, the uh, example of success or it is example, definitely it is example of taking risks, that's what I understood, but not necessarily uh, uh, an example of reaching the success because you gave up at a certain point of time, right? From that point of view, as an inspiration speech, I think it would be good to, you know, uh, to make an example where people are really inspiring uh, and following you as a star at the, at, the, at the stage. That's what I think inspiration is about. Okay, uh, anyway, I think you, you are very excellent about the speech, uh, about the public speaking. Uh, thank you, and I'm looking forward to the next speeches. Thank you, Colombo. And now, one minute of silence. for a great commencement speech. It was really powerful and motivating. Starting from the very beginning of it, uh, up until the end, we can feel the energy flowing from the gestures, from the stance and body movements, feeling smooth, uh, moving smooth and uh, driving the sense of it up until the very end. The most, the most important thing that I really liked was your passion. I, I could see that you were really sharing your experience, not, not only sharing experience, but rather uh, motivating others not to follow maybe not the mistakes, but some of the things that could have uh, done, could have been done differently earlier. What I would... Um, try to suggest you to maybe not change, but to fiddle with something. Uh, your, your speech was very, very powerful, again, from the very, very beginning until the end. But I think you could have uh, tried to add to it a little bit of structure. So you could have, some, uh, you could have said some things uh, for us as an audience to, participate, to anticipate, to wait, or for something to happen to be said, and when it, 
when it's been said, then it really moves the audience uh, sometimes. So once again, the the personal experience goes all, all, all the time very good, and uh, I thank you for that. For the ending of the speech, uh, the, the poem, of course, you might have uh, tried to learn it by heart. I remember on one of the meetings we saw a guy, he stopped uh, coming up after this, unfortunately, but he was delivering the very same poem, and he did it very passionately and very uh, intimidating for me as an audience. This is a really great poem, and your speech was really great. Thank you for this. Um, I'm glad to be here. 
here today and I'm glad to listen to such a nice speech which actually motivates us all to follow our passion and to stand on it. Um, I would like to say what, what you can do to make the speech better. Um, first of all, probably it would be nice to hear some more examples about success because, come on, Donald Trump is not the best example. I'm sure that there are much more people. Um, and if we are saying about success, uh, success is not only about materialistic stuff, like, and probably if you could connect to your audience and to ask what a success actually is for other people, like, I don't know, for, for a woman who wished to have a baby and cannot have it because of medical issue, success is to actually pregnancy, right? And for, I don't know, for the creators and artists, success is when other people ex accept their um, creations and so on. So probably more examples of success, not about just materialistic stuff and not about just like go on and stand on your dream, but some more examples, it would be nice. Um, saying something about your like structure and grammar, well, obviously it was everything perfect because you're a native speaker and grammar and structure and body language were completely like great. Um, however, I would say that you can um, work more on your voice because uh, sometimes you should make pauses just to make your text more meaningful. Um, also, well, this secret use actors. They change the tone, the speed, and the volume of their voice uh, to make it more interesting for the audience and a little bit like more motivation, mot motivate some other people. And I was happy to listen to the poem in the, like as a final word, but I think that if you would say something from your heart to motivate others, to encourage others, just like to not give it down and to stand on their dream and to follow their passion, just like to make a final word from your heart, not just a poem, it would be even greater and better. But, but thank you, that was a really nice speech. Welcome participant number five, Dea Shishuk. Dear Toastmaster graduates, congratulations! You finally graduated from your Toastmaster program. And today I want to talk with you about success. What is success to us, Toastmasters? Strong speeches. You deliver a speech and people approach you after the speech and they're like, why can't I read about it? That's success. You deliver a speech and people laugh in throughout your speech and they're, oh my God, that's the best time of my life. That's success. You deliver a speech, people are crying there and they're rethinking their life. That's success. And I don't want to talk with you about success because it's boring. Let, us, let me give you an example of a speech and let us together think about whether it was successful or not. Column's speech today, our graduate, was it successful? Well, first of all, let me tell you about the things I liked about the speech. Well, his English is very good. <laughs> the second thing is, the idea was interesting. To build his speech as a commencement speech, which is a good thing. You, you might do something with that. And the third thing is, using personal stories is a very good way to connect with people. Now, was it a strong speech? I don't think so. Let me tell you why. The first, well, using poetry. Using poetry, you have to be really careful about using poetry in your speeches. Not everyone loves poetry. I hate it. Unless it's rap. Right? And, and when you use poetry, you have to impress people. Not take out your phone, look at it, and start reading from your phone, not loud enough. It's not a good way. You want to use poetry? Pick a shorter poem make sure you perform on stage so people are interested. The second thing is, you want to speak about success? Impress me. I went to music, so what? I did stand up, so what? 
I wrote a book. How much books have you already sold? Not impressive. Tell us either about something emotional in your life. Say, some you strong failure you feel strongly about. Or some really impressive success. If you don't have successes you're proud of, you, you can impress us with. Give us an example of a person whose success we can be in awe of. So overall, good ideas. Using poetry was not very well done. And if you want to impress us, choose something to impress us really carefully. Overall, dear Toastmaster graduates, you are good speakers already. Just be careful what you choose and work hard on it. Be successful. Dear Toastbusters, dear guests, dear Calum. Calum delivered the commencement speech today. The commencement speech is delivered usually to students, to graduating students. Universities usually invite some well-known, successful people to give advice to students who are open to the world and are eager to start working. In overall, I liked Calm's speech very much. It was inspiring, it was sincere, it goes right from his heart. The strong points are clear and strong message, personal stories, very clear structure, and some parts with humor. You were you told us about you emerged some humorous parts. Like student loans at the beginning, it was funny. About the strong message, uh, you tried to give some useful advice to students. You you wanted to share some piece of wisdom to students, so they can avoid mistakes in their life. Your speech was startling, connected to your personal experience in the past. You had three clear messages. Follow your passion. Second, without fear, taking risk. And the third one is until you finish. So let's speak about the weak points of your mm, speech that can be improved. The, the first thing I would like to advise you is about uh, Taking risks. You mentioned that you took the risk by playing, start playing uh, banjo. Yes. For me, it doesn't seem like a risk. It seems more like uh, uh, finding solutions how to achieve your goal, how to become a member of your band. I would advise you to take the risk like going to Russia. It seems like a risk for students in Great Britain. It's not a risk for us, of course, we are brave enough to live here, but for students of Great Britain it's quite a risk. The, the second one is about until you finish. I don't like the word finish. I mean, it's better to, we assume that you told about success, but it's better to tell us about the progress that you keep on coming. But finish is assumed is about like death. And the, the last one is about uh, reading from the mobile, you, you better to be prepared more and read from the list. So next time be prepared to read from the list and good luck and uh, wish you many commercial speeches in universities. In universities. And now a moment of silence for the judges. I hope they will finish their evaluation soon. Because, and now I'd like to present our Table Topics Master for today, Adita Sharon. Adita, the stage I feel tonight. I think everything is okay. Very good. Fellow Toastmasters, must welcome guests, Sergei, K. 
Kira, Ivan, welcome. <laughs> it's, uh, let me tell you one fact. Uh, according to the last survey of Toastmasters International, uh, the favorite part of the meetings around the globe in Toastmasters community, table topic master session. And uh, we need to know that. Because it's a favorite and at the same time it's quite challenging part of the meeting. So uh, for newcomers just a couple of words about table topic session. What is table topic? It's about uh, developing your ability to organize your thoughts and quickly uh, respond to an impromptu question or topic. It's very simple. I will read the question come to the stage and respond. Tell us your story shortly and you will have a time limit from one to two minutes to speak in front of the audience. So let's start. And what's the topic of this table topic session? Uh, the last weekend I discover for myself that we have awesome beautiful app on the app store which is table topics master session app <laughs> let me write it I'm sure it's the same app on the Android and uh, today we will test this app, how it works and who is volunteer? <laughs> you were supposed to install this one? No, not necessary. You can do it on the weekend and just uh, mm -hmm. train yourself, Polish practice, your table topic skills. Uh, Newcomers in our priority, please, Ivan, let's try. Kira is preparing, Sergey the next one. <laughs> so I open this up, and the question number one, please. Really loud, announce. What are you waiting for? How are you waiting? How are you writing your life story? Okay. <laughs> it's a tough one. If you think it's too tough, we can move to the second one. <laughs> okay, let's screen this one. What are you waiting for? Okay. And how are you writing your life story? What are you waiting for? What am I waiting for? Uh, I really thought about that. Uh, what is the uh, goal of our life? But I still don't know the answer. Uh, I think that uh, in this period of my time, I just uh, should keep uh, experience, life experience and uh, just uh, try to as many life aims as, uh, as I can. For example, my first uh, education was electronics engineering and I worked for three years uh, in my first uh, profession and then I just uh, interested in other area in finance and uh, I moved I enrolled to second university to take a degree in this area and uh, now I work in finance and uh, now I understand that uh, I like it more and it was a good uh, decision to try this so now 
I don't know what what is the finished goal, <laughs> but uh, my lifestyle is to to not fear of new things and try. For example, now I come here, even I don't uh, <laughs> don't speak a lot of for audience. Thank you. I think it was good stuff. What's the most important lesson you learned in the last year? I like this question very much. <laughs> you know, because I think that the most important thing happened with me the last year. And while the target speaker was talking today, I thought that uh, uh, I, uh, I already knew what would be my great topic if I would be a target speaker. Um, the great lesson that I learned from the year that has passed is that everyone should take care of themselves. <laughs> that sounds very uh, simple, but you really should. And uh, I will explain. Uh, this thought uh, came because of my father's disease. And uh, that is uh, not very rare disease, but nobody knows actually about it. And I, uh, since uh, my father suffers from a terminal stage of uh, kidney disease, I take every chance to tell others, take care of you and please pay attention to your kidneys. <laughs> really, that really does matter. Because kidney disease, uh, they are very silent killers. And please go to the doctor and uh, make blood tests just to be sure that everything is okay. <laughs> and if I have another chance later, I will tell you about that um, something else. <laughs> Based on your current daily actions and routines, uh, where would you expect to be in five years? Clear? Uh, yes, it's quite clear. So, it's it's clear. Clear. <laughs> uh, so if I uh, if I answer on the very first question, uh, which was uh, Nikolai's, uh, so I have certain uh, life priorities. So in and I hope. In five years, I will achieve uh, in, in uh, developing these priorities and uh, growing myself. So uh, the number one is my career. So I'm looking on uh, development of my company and growing and having a bigger share of the market uh, and basically earning more money for me and for my family. So number two is uh, my uh, working, my work on myself because I'm really into developing myself and uh, working on. Uh, health and my body and my spiritual work with the, you know, several, several techniques and it's very much connected with the uh, second, uh, second part, second uh, stream in my, in my work, my business. What I would like to do is uh, to open some, some uh, new maybe place, maybe online school to share with people my experience, what I had after some uh, five years of very intense work. Uh, so, I hope in five years I will uh, have this successful school, I will still have my successful legal business and I will be still working on myself and achieve uh, what, I'm, what I'm setting up for myself. This is it, actually. Okay. Uh, probably 
Okay, my mentor. Actually, you know, guys, I was expecting another question and I prepared some jokes, but this question is pretty serious for me because I also was thinking about it for a period. Nowadays, the best mentor for me is my mom. And uh, it was a way to understand it. And uh, I am really happy to realize this person gave, give, and I hope will give me a lot. And uh, actually, leaders uh, le learn all the time. And it's not only about the leaders. I wish to all and everybody to have a mentor in your life. Uh, it could be the person, not just like your parents or. Uh, anybody else it could be somebody who is really important only to you and uh, it's uh, actually it's not a topic to share it in table topic session i think it's a good uh, topic to prepare a speech <laughs> maybe for the future but anyway i can't uh, imagine <coughs> my life and self-development without a mentor and let me say without my mom thank you <clears throat> when you have a random hour of free time, what do you usually do? Well, I, I can't say that there's one thing that I usually do in my free time. Um, there's m many things that I would like to do depending on the situation, so I might like to talk to somebody on the phone, uh, catch up with some friends to see what they're doing, um, or I can go to a coffee shop, sit down, have a tea, of the pick of If you haven't tried it, I recommend it, it's fantastic. Um, obviously read, I like to read a lot, so, but I wouldn't consider that to be my free time. I like put that into my schedule, reading time, so uh, I wouldn't call it free time. Um, so yeah, uh, people or tea? That's very <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Would you rather your child be less attractive and extremely intelligent or extremely attractive and less intelligent? <laughs> it's a serious question. Um, well, I remember the famous words of Marilyn Monroe uh, who said that she always like wondered to be a stupid because stupid girls are actually more attractive for men and it's easy for them to live in our society probably and if I would have a girl I would say that I would rather to have attractive girl less intelligent but if I would have a boy definitely important for him to not be so attractive it's more important for him to be smart, to reach some goals, to be strong, powerful, and of course, intelligence. So, this is it. <laughs> Actually, I think it's uh, not a question about more attractive, less attractive, more intelligent, less intelligent. It's a question about happiness. Are you happy or you are happy? Any other volunteers? Alex, oh, Alex, please. <laughs> Alex. What do I like?
lies do you often tell? Uh, white lies. Uh, it's a uh, very uh, important uh, instrument for us. Uh, I mean, uh, when you tell his child, his children, you should uh, uh, be a white person with uh, uh, how uh, Father Frost and uh, tell uh, them only uh, wonderful things. Uh, when uh, white uh, lies will be useful yet, uh, I, uh, I think uh, uh, I don't want to say that it is why why, why, but uh, uh, sometimes when we uh, have a, uh, a difficult truth for somebody, uh, probably uh, we uh, should to find uh, uh, suitable words. Uh, it is not a lie, but uh, you should to uh, uh, it uh, should not be hard words for him or for her um, but sometimes maybe you should uh, choose a white line that's all thank you meeting, download there and train yourself in front of the window next next weekend. Thank you and back to you. Thank you very much Ariel. It was entertaining and you go up with the technologies. That's good. Thank you for enlightening us. And now actually it's time to no, the winners. I would like to uh, ask to the stage our chief judge to help me to distribute uh, all the certificates. But first of all, uh, but first of all, I also would like to um, ask all the participants to join me and Tanya on the stage. So please come here.